Hello everyone. Excited you are here. Happy to be talking to you live for our live stream launch. I've got the book with me. I was telling someone the other day, I feel like I've been pregnant for two years and I just gave birth and I don't think my wife would like it if I used that example. So excited you're here though. It's an exciting day. Tomorrow is the official launch day. And so we wanted to do a live stream tonight, show you guys inside the book, talk about what's in it, answer your questions, um, and show you, you know, inside the book, which I'm really excited to do. So I want to talk briefly about why we're here, what we're going to do, and then uh, we're going to show you a video that we're launching tomorrow for this book. You guys are going to be the first ones to see it. A little reward for joining us, uh, and then we'll be posting that tomorrow. So obviously we're here to launch the new book. We're going to share what's in it inside, and then towards the end there's going to be an announcement that I'm excited to share about what's next. Um, so I'm also going to call out some of the people buying. So uh, let's throw up on screen the sale image, show you guys what is in this bundle if you buy. Uh, it is 75 bucks for all of this. It's like $216 when they're going to be separate. Once this launch sale ends, you're going to have to buy these separately. We've got the book, which is like 240 pages. We've got the curriculum, which is about 200 pages of curriculum. We've got an audiobook, which is like six hours long, this full thing and an amazing audiobook. And then we've got a bunch of videos as well to learn more history. So tuttletwins.com slash history. Order now. Pull up your other phone. Pull it up on a computer. You can place the order. And if you order live, we may call you out and say thanks and uh, pull up some of those orders. So without further ado, adieu. Is that French? I don't even know. Without further ado, uh, I want to share, share with you guys the video that we put together. Again, we're going to launch this tomorrow officially. It'll be its own like standalone post on our social channels. Uh, but for now, we want to show you the video we put together. It's about two minutes. And then on the flip side, we can walk through this and get into some of uh, the stuff inside the book. Here's the video. We've all heard this phrase a million times. Those who don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. But look around you. Our society is full of people who went to school, who were supposedly taught American history, yet who love socialism and attack the ideas that America was founded upon. Individual liberty, property rights, and free markets. It seems that the rising generation isn't learning from the past. And that's no surprise since nearly every social studies book only teaches kids about the past. Names, dates, places, and other superficial factoids. Today's textbooks miserably fail when it comes to explaining the ideas the values and the philosophies that led America's founding fathers to do what they did. Put simply, children today aren't being taught to learn from the past, and we're all paying the price. For the past two years, we've been working on a solution, and it couldn't have come at a better time. With Marxist organizations and activists trying to rewrite the past and cast aside the principles embraced by our founding generation, the need has never been greater for educational material to help our children learn the truth. That's why I'm excited to share with you our solution to this problem, a Tuttle Twins textbook that teaches American history. Imagine if your children could learn about American history in a way that explains not just the events of the past, but also the ideas that led them to happen. It's those ideas that can be applied in our day. And if we understand how and why things happened in the past, then we can actually learn from them. It all starts with understanding our history. And there's no better way for your children to learn history than through fun storytelling and entertaining illustrations. Our team has sold over 4 million Tuttle Twins books. And in consultation with a variety of historians to guide our work, we've created a 240 page fully illustrated book to teach the inspiring stories of our country's past. It's a beautiful book, but more importantly, it teaches important ideas from our past so your kids can apply them to their lives today. And while our high quality hardback book is great as a standalone reader, we also have a companion curriculum workbook and a wonderfully produced audiobook to help your children learn even more about America's past. There are many problems in our country today and parents like you want to be part of the solution but often don't know how. Teaching your kids the truth about our history is the first step. Buy your copy of America's History from the Tuttle Twins team today and start reading as a family. And together, let's learn from the past to create a better future. All right, what do you guys think? That guy is like devilishly, devilishly handsome, right? 
face made for radio. Uh, but it, that was exciting. That was fun to do. We're launching that video tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be boosting that. We would love for you guys to share that, especially like most of you who have already pre-ordered, you know, sharing that with your friends, telling them, hey, I pre-ordered this, check it out. Uh, we would really love for you to help us with the launch tomorrow uh, and really just promote this to your friends and share it with other people. Like this is how we save the country by teaching history uh, the right way. And so look for that video tomorrow and we would love it if you would share um, once that post goes live. Okay, first I want to answer the question, why do this at all. I've been doing a few interviews. I had a reporter just yesterday say, why another history book? We've got a lot of history books. And the truth is that, you know, about two and a half years ago, um, I was approached by someone who was like, hey, like, I don't know what to do history for my kids. And I was like, what are you talking about? There's all kinds of history books and history curriculum. And my kids were reading, I think, Rush Revere uh, and doing like the good and the beautiful and like whatever, right? And we talk about history a little bit in our books, but they're not history books. They're more like books about principles. And so I didn't feel like we really needed uh, to do a history book. I was kind of skeptical that that would be a thing. And I started hearing this from a few people. So we put out like some posts on social media and a survey. What do you use for history? Do you like it? And there was a lot of dissatisfaction, even in like the homeschool community, with how American history is taught. So I went on Amazon and eBay and I bought about a dozen social studies books, the ones that are used in like fourth through, you know, eighth grade. And I buy all these books that like 80% of the students in the country are using, because you know how this is, like the standard textbooks are used by most schools. So I start flipping through these books. They're all at home, otherwise I would have a big stack here to show you guys. Uh, we're doing some videos with them, so they're home right now. And I'm, I'm flipping through these books, and they're as you might expect. In other words, uh, at least what I expected, and that is they're full of like names and dates and facts and when this battle was fought and who said this and which letter on which date to who and like the stuff that young Connor hated to memorize and it was always pump and dump, you know, I got a quiz, okay, I'm done, moving on. And there was never any context, there was ne never any value. And, you know, I was the type of student that, like, why do we need to memorize this? Why is, oh, someday you'll need it. it you know, it's important someday, like, right? And so I never enjoyed history um, when I was growing up, when I was in school. And so here I am reading these books that most kids today are, are being taught from uh, to learn history. And they were really good at the superficial stuff. Again, names, dates, all that stuff. But they didn't really at all talk about the substantive stuff. I'll give you a quick example. So John Adams, he once wrote in a letter that the real American Revolution happened in the 15 years before the first shot was ever fired at Lexington and Concord. Well, how can that be? We often think of the revolution as starting when the first shot was fired. The shot heard round the world, uh, around the world, right? And, uh, and here's John Adams saying, no, the real revolution was 15 years in the preceding 15 years before that. Well, what does that even mean? Well, what it means is that was the intellectual revolution. That was the mindset shift, right? And so what happened was the colonists were starting to understand themselves differently. They were starting to see themselves differently. Why? Almost entirely because of John Locke. John Locke is writing about life, liberty, and property, and this guy is amazingly influential, writing these books and pamphlets and everything, and the colonists are just like binging on this stuff. And they're talking about it, they're debating it, they're writing their own you know, newspapers and all this stuff, and it was fanning the flames. And it was that mindset shift where the colonists started to see themselves not as British subjects, but as free and independent individuals, that then led to the provocations with the shot heard around the world and the fighting that follows. So John Adams is crediting the 15 years beforehand. So you would think, you would think that these social studies books would talk all about John Locke and his writings and how influential, like if they mention him at all, it's like in passing, right? Brief, whatever, here's this guy, he wrote this thing. Okay, moving on. And, and these books are devoid of ideas. They're devoid of the philosophy. They don't talk about the Judeo-Christian influence or the Greco-Roman influence or all of the things that led the founding fathers to do what they did. When the signers of the declaration got around and you know penned their names, Again, that's actually July 2nd, not July 4th, so, you know, pop quiz, right? The real Declaration of Independence Day is July 2nd, but if you don't know that, you can go Google that later. 
But here they are signing their names. And what did they do? If you read the end of the document, they said, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our honor. But why? Why would they do that? These books, what did they say? Oh, they were upset about no taxation without representation. Like, okay, sure, yes, but like, that's like this much compared to everything that was going on and why they were really fighting. So we wanted to fix that. We realized that young kids today are not adequately being taught history. And why does that matter? Those who don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. Here we are today, our high schools are pumping out socialists and social justice warriors and woke kids and all the rest. And we're paying the price, again, as that video said, because they're voting for politicians and policies. They're horrible. And it's because we're not teaching them our past. It's, not, it's, it's because they don't remember the lessons from the past. And so they just repeat its mistakes. And I don't want that. I don't want a dark dystopian future where we don't understand these ideals and we don't fight for them and we don't make sure that they're incorporated today. So that is why we've done the book. This is two and a half years in the making. I just pulled up the other day the, the first like conversation Elijah and I were happening, uh, having and when we were first talking about that, two and a half years. Um, and so this has been a long time coming. We've been working under the radar, secretly, quietly for a long time, but we're really excited to share it with you. Now there's been a lot of people who have helped on this book to get it to where it is. We've had help writing and editing and illustrating and historians consulting us, and this has very much been a group project. Now, I want to put up on the screen really quick for those joining recently, we've got a big launch bundle. I'm going to uh, talk about this a little bit more later, and we're going to show you inside this book in just a moment. But if you haven't yet, make sure you are going to tuttletwins.com slash history. You get all of this stuff for 75 bucks. This book alone is normally $100. That's what it's going to be priced back at after the sale. But you get all the curriculum, all the audiobooks, all the videos, Make sure you are getting it today. Now, why does that matter? I was at our warehouse this morning. So we had a warehouse and then we outgrew that one. So then we moved into a warehouse double the size. Then we outgrew that one. So we had to get another warehouse. So now we have two warehouses. And then we're making an offer next week on another warehouse that's like triple what we have now just because we keep growing. So I was at the warehouse this morning and they're packing up like, you know, Santa's elves almost just, you know, furiously packing everything up. We got a whole bunch of people working there and they are swamped under orders. You guys, we have so many people buying this book. So if you want to get this book soon, place your order tonight ASAP uh, so that you don't have any kind of long wait. We've had pre-orders open for about a couple weeks, a uh, week or uh, two, but uh, tomorrow is the launch. There's going to be a lot of orders, so place yours tonight so you're a little bit ahead of the big launch tomorrow if you have not ordered yet. We've got a ton of people. I've already looking on my screen here. We got Lisa from Southgate. We got Monica from Camarillo. Elise from Monroe. Lisa from Lenexa. Man, we got, they're just scrolling fast. We got Bridget from East Hampton. We got Carol on the screen, pre-orders, waiting for it to arrive. Guys, there's, this is just like scrolling fast. I'm looking in our e-commerce screen and uh, there's a ton of stuff happening. Jason saying, I love your content. Eight-year-old can't wait for the new book. You know, that's one of the questions that we've been getting a lot. What is the age range for this book? Uh, we're targeting like seven to 13. Uh, but again, like all of our Tuttle Twins books, younger kids are going to do great. Older kids are going to do great. Uh, but seven to 13 is kind of the sweet spot for where we're at. Catherine pre -order, like you guys, we've had so many pre-orders. Uh, it's been awesome. There is clearly a lot of demand. Brant's is already arriving tomorrow. I think we just dropped a huge order off uh, uh, to our delivery folks yesterday, the first like few thousand we, we got out. Uh, so place your order tonight, tuttletwins.com slash history, and we're going to be able to get you the book soon and sooner than all the people who are ordering their book uh, a little bit later. Now I want to talk about the format of the new book. Um, and after I talk about the format of the new book, I want to answer some questions. So if you're curious about anything about this book, go ahead and type it in. We're streaming on Facebook and YouTube, and we're going to pull your questions on the screen. I'll spend a few minutes answering questions, and then we're going to dive into the book, and I'm going to show you a little bit. So the format of this book is narrative. This is a storybook. As it says, it's a Tuttle Twins series of stories. Why did we do that? Well, we did that because young Connor who did not like memorizing facts and pump and dump, you know, in school, learning all this stuff. Uh, just like young Connor, so many kids today are being drilled with all this information and there's no context. And they don't understand why it matters to them.
Whereas humans, our brains literally, like chemically, are wired for story. We are addicted to story. It's why we love movies. It's why we love books. And so we wanted a storybook to talk about history. History is story. And so we started working on this. And you guys, we had to go through a few iterations. This, one of the reasons why it took us for a while is we first were doing, uh, you know, a set of um, uh, chapters that we were working on, some, some early drafts. And we didn't really like the direction we were going. So we went back to the drawing board, started over, and uh, we've landed in a really good spot, but the story is what's important to us. So Ethan and Emily in this story are joined by Fred, and you'll see as you get into the story how this works, that Fred ends up being their his, uh, history teacher, and they go on a bunch of fun little adventures and experiences, and what's great about this format is that Ethan and Emily are able to ask questions of Fred. Now, why does that matter? It matters because your son or your daughter might have those questions themselves. Well, why did things happen that way? Why did they dump the tea in Boston Harbor? Why was George Washington picked over Charles Lee? And why does that matter? Did George Washington really start this worldwide revolution because of what he did when he was a British redcoat? And so Ethan and Emily can voice those questions that your kids might naturally have. And so why that matters is that your kids are getting more detailed kind of a feedback loop where they're not just reading about what happened, they're also reading in like a second layer of understanding. Because Fred will say, here's what happened and what was going on, and Ethan or Emily might interject with a question, and so then Fred boils it down a little further, and he explains a little bit more simply in response to that question. So this format lends itself really well to teaching history. And how do I know that? Well, we've done a bunch of beta testing with this book. As we've been working on it, we've been sharing the chapters with a lot of different families just to figure out what's working well, what's not, what do your kids understand. And then once we got the book uh, produced, we sent some early copies out to some reviewers and some families. And the feedback is just like mind-blowingly positive. People are elated that their kids who didn't like history love it now. Like, it's just going really well. So that is the format. It's all narrative. It's all storytelling. Um, and so that's what we have chosen for our book. Now, let's get into answering a few questions. We'll certainly have time for more questions later. But let's tackle a few questions. And then uh, I'm going to show you guys inside the book and walk you through it. Um, and so one question. Jamie, you know, as we already said, age 7 to 13. Uh, what's fun about all of our books, of course, is that even though we target a certain age range, we get kids of all ages and the parents uh, oftentimes learning this. I was just on a, a podcast interview yesterday with the lady that we sent an advanced book to. She says, my kids are too old. I don't have grandkids yet, but I read this book and I learned a ton and I've been talking to my husband at dinner every night about the things I've been learning. So our books really, and especially this book, are more, I would say, family books for kids of all ages. But that sweet spot is really going to be kids aged to 17. So Jamie, thanks for the question. All right, Sarah, are you going to keep going past 1776? Sarah, you can't steal my thunder. You're going to have to wait for the announcement at the end. We'll get back to that a little bit later, and I'll share with you what is, uh, what is going on. But that's a good question, because obviously the uh, book here says 1215 through 1776. So that's a natural question to have. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Jessica is wondering, can I get the link for the pre-order to send to my friends? Let's throw back on screen what our sale is. Super easy link, tuttletwins.com slash history. Share it with the world. Post it on Facebook. Send an email to your family, your church group, whatever you want. That is not only the pre-order still today. So right now the whole website says pre-order. Uh, tomorrow that is going to be changed. So it'll just say order now because tomorrow is the launch day. The same deal will apply. You're going to be able to get the same bundle uh, one of the questions I've had is how long is that deal going to go for? At least the first week of July. We might go a few days beyond that. No guarantees. So it's kind of a 4th of July bundle and then maybe a few days after that. So again, get your orders in now, especially if you don't want to wait longer because we're going to have to try and uh, have our poor warehouse team package all these up and get them out. Amber is wondering, who did the audiobook? Is it a voice the kids might recognize? Uh, if they have listened to past Tuttle Twins books, then yes, we use Nancy Peterson for all of our audio. She's done a whole bunch of other stuff too, uh, but she does all of the audiobooks for the existing uh, Tuttle Twins children's books, the 12 that we have in that series. So if you've listened to those, you'll recognize her voice. Um, took her a little while to do because this is basically 11 Tuttle Twins books in one. There's 11 chapters, and every chapter is roughly the length of one of our children's books. So that's why it's like six hours long 
of audiobook content. Okay, we'll save uh, additional questions for later. Feel free to keep typing them in if you, if you got them. Now I'm going to show you the book. And I'm still scrolling here. I'm looking at like our e-commerce thing. All these orders are flying in. We got Jaron from Saratoga Springs, Utah. Uh, we got Mike from Lonsdale, Pennsylvania. Brandon from Washington, West Virginia. I wonder how many cities there are uh, named Washington. Seems like there's, there's a lot. Erica from Lufkin, Texas. Shalene from Topeka, Kansas. Aiden from Phoenix. I was just there last week. Okay, so we're going to switch cameras here, and I am going to uh, show you inside the book. We got a second camera angle here. I feel like I'm on QVC. I need to, like, have my hair all done really nice, and, uh, you know, I need to be talking in two decibels higher and two octaves higher, and uh, but we got the, the overhead camera so we can show you guys what we're doing. So this is the book. Obviously, you've seen the image already. We got the back of the book here. Those who don't learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. And, uh, and this is the image from one of the books. So this is really nice hardback. Just everyone who's seeing this and, and has held it is really impressed by just the quality. Um, feels like really, really sturdy. Feels really nice. Just the paper kind of texture they use. Now, why 1215? Well, that's the Magna Carta. If you don't know much about that, you and your kids are going to learn about it in the book. Um, and I'll explain in just a moment why we go back that far in history. So here's the book. You know, I explain. I'll move my computer out of the way here. Ah, there we go. We got, you can see me and the book at the same time. Very cool. All right, so here's the table of contents. So you can see here how we've mapped out, as I said, there's 11 chapters. So each of these goes chronologically from the 1200s all the way through 1776 and ends up being about a 240-page book. Now every chapter when you open it up, we've got this full spread image uh, illustration that kind of tees up what this is about and then we get into the story. Now the whole book, if I were to, I'm just going to do a little, one of these little flip things so that those of you who haven't seen yet can get a quick kind of insight into the whole book and then I'll walk through at least a chapter or two just so you can kind of see how we've laid it out and what that looks like. But tons of illustrations. Elijah has done an amazing job and, uh, and these are, we got some fun little comics and jokes in there. And uh, there's, you know, the chapter head illustrations. So just a lot of custom illustrations, timelines, you know, fact uh, finders, biographies, all kinds of stuff. So there's your little flip through. Um, and, uh, oh man, I'm just, I'm like geeking out. I'm just so excited that we got this out. So we're starting off the whole book with Marco Polo and the Silk Road. Why would we go all the way back to the 1200s to talk about this book? Well, we're talking about the 1200s because the Americas were colonized, right? But why did colonization happen? Colonization happened because there were explorers going all over across, you know, the seas and their ships. Well, why were they exploring? What was the incentive for them to go out and explore? Well, it was because they were on the hunt for spices and silks and materials and things because there had been a lot of trade in large part because of the Silk Road and Marco Polo and the adventures that sprung from that. So America's story is born centuries before as trade led to exploration, led to colonization. You know, it's not great to have empires, but that's just the way the world was at the time. So they have colonization, which led to, you know, the Americas and the American country uh, being formed. So we go way back to say America's story is actually a story of trade and human betterment, trying to make the world a better place. And so here we've got a little biography of Marco Polo. Again, not like a ton of paragraphs and here's all this stuff. It's just like here's some fun little bullet points, just planting some seeds, trying to keep it easy, interspersing all the text with illustrations. We're breaking it up. It's not a big wall of text that anyone's having to read through. And so, of course, the illustrations go with the story, this whole story where they've got this map and they're talking about trade, the different foods coming from different areas. As you know, if you've read any of our existing books, we always like to throw food in there, creates an opportunity for you know, recipes and cooking together and talking about that as a family. We've got several timelines uh, in here like this. A lot of people are visual learners. So we'll talk in the story about different dates and events, but here you can see kind of in context Right, so here's Marco Polo beginning his travels a few years later, but here's King John and the Magna Carta, which we're going to talk about. Um, and so you can kind of see like some of the events that were setting the stage and that we talk about in the story. So it just gives additional context. You know, see, th this is fun, right? All hands on deck, plundering politicians off our stern. 
And then the pirates say, you offend us too much. We be only pirates. Like, we're not as bad as politicians. We're just pirates. And so we had, we had some fun little zingers and comics that Elijah did there. Um, so thank you, Betty. Beautifully illustrated. I agree, Elijah. We've been working him to death. The poor guy's going to have arthritis here pretty soon from everything he's been doing. He's been doing a bang-up job. And I should say, Elijah, um, you know, has been doing a phenomenal job, not just on the illustrations, but he has contributed so much to the story and studying history and helping guide the whole project. And so this has been uh, a labor of love. And, uh, and it is just beautiful how it's turned out. So again, we're, we're laying out the map. We're starting to talk about the different places so people can kind of figure out where it was. You know, you're seeing kind of the spread of the Silk Road, the exploration, giving context to the story. All right, so here's where I want to make sure we talk about it as well. So this is the end of chapter one. And of course, it tees up chapter two. We're kind of teeing up what's happening next. But this is really important. Every chapter ends with two things a thought from either Connor or Elijah. And as you can see, for whatever reason, uh, we continue to use the pre-beard uh, Connor illustration, which is like five or six years old at this point. But we've used them in all the Tuttle Twins books, so we're just going to keep using it, I guess. But we have a thought uh, from me or Elijah at the end of every chapter where we can try and help summarize and give additional context to what we're talking about in the book. Because you can read the story and, okay, what, what, trying to understand, a lot of this is new. And so here we come to just simplify and summarize and really tie up with a bow the main concepts that we're talking about here. Why? Because our book is not about what happened, or rather not just about what happened. More importantly, it's about how and why it happened. Why these things happened the way they did. The ideas uh, that were at play in these world events. Why is that relevant? And so that's where we come to this next section. Let's talk about it. This is an opportunity for us to talk about modern relevance to what was happening back then in history. Why is that important? Again, those who don't learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. We need to flex our, our muscles in terms of applying past lessons to present day situations. We're not teaching this to kids. Existing history books are not talking to kids about applying something from 200, 400, 800 years ago to our modern day. But that's the whole point of history. We should be extracting those lessons and drawing from that so that we can apply it today. And so this section at the end of every chapter, let me find another one so you can see. This section at the end of every chapter is where we can do that. So here's timeline. We got a thought from Elijah. He doesn't have a beard, so his photos, well, no, he does have a beard. He has a beard from time to time, I feel like. And uh, I forget, I, I don't pay attention to those details. My wife asked me a few weeks ago what color her eyes were, and I don't even know. <laughs> I'm so bad with that stuff. So I think Elijah has a beard right now. These are pre-beard uh, illustrations for both of us. But here's another example, the let's talk about it section. Okay, so thought from Elijah, again, simplifying and summarizing the core ideas from that chapter. And then let's talk about a modern example, a modern connection to what was going on. Uh, so for here, uh, this chapter, right, it says, here's a question for you to discuss. How can we determine if we should change our beliefs when we are presented with new information or ideas? And so in the preceding paragraphs, we're talking about that, how that applies today when our beliefs are challenged by new information. How do we, do we cling to that? Do we stay defensive? Again, we want to empower your kids with ideas that can motivate them and elevate them and, and encourage them today in their life. Otherwise, what's the point? Who cares what type of musket they used or if they ate hardtack or, you know, who fought who and which battlefield was where? Like, ultimately, why does that matter? It matters because it can impact our life today if we let it, if, if history is framed the right way. That is the magic behind this book. That's why your family needs a copy so that you can talk about what this stuff means for you in your lives today. So, you know, here we've got a lot of stuff. So like here's a section where there's a lot of people we're talking about, a lot of these explorers. And so we wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to lay that out, give a little bit more biographical information for each. Otherwise, as you're reading through a story, you may not fully understand. We don't want to take time in a story to like go off on tangents and really dive deep to explain. And so here is where we can give a little aside and provide a little bit more information on who these people are. And then additionally, with things beyond just biographies, like I just mentioned, it's like here we're talking about the printing press and the amazing revolution that that had on the distribution of knowledge. Well, let's dig into that a little bit more. Let's talk about the Gutenberg printing press. Now, like any history book or any book, 
we're only able to go so far. This isn't going to have, you know, like a scholarly level of depth. Obviously, this is for like 8 and 10, 12-year-olds. Um, what we're trying to do is plant seeds, spark curiosity, so that if you're reading this and your kid asks you a question about the Gutenberg printing press, or how did that happen, or why was that, or whatever, who was Gutenberg, why was it named that, right? This is about sparking curiosity so that your kids are, are uh, desirous to go learn more about history. And then you guys can go pull up YouTube videos or you know, web pages online or whatever you want uh, to go in and dig out more. And so there's an illustration here. Yeah, see, so here, I love this stuff. Elijah has such a talent for uh, taking concepts and then visualizing them for visual learners to be able to uh, share as well. So, you know, here's an example where this person was previously fettered with shackles. They were only able to read so many things. They were only able to gain a certain amount of information, right? But access to the Bible, which was, you know, heavily distributed through the, uh, the printing process, the Gutenberg printing, right? Everyone could start to learn more about, well, wait a minute, kings aren't able to have that. God didn't say that. Uh, and they were empowered with that information and suddenly breaking their shackles of political and theological rule and uh, talking about it a lot. And so the illustrations in here are able to support and amplify a lot of the lessons. So, uh, you know, here we got the different ships. We got the Mayflower, but did you know about these other ones? Well, your kids are going to learn about it in the story. And uh, another joke there, we'll save that for when you get the book. You know, here's the Mayflower Compact. So that is the format. We're telling a story through the whole thing, but then we have these little content modules where uh, we can share additional contextual information. Here's a whole two-page spread all about, you can see right there, the African slave trade in America. Guys, this is an important topic. Some people struggle with this. We wanted to make sure we frame this the right way where we talk about it, but we give it the nuance that it needs. Uh, you get like the critical race folk, the critical race theory folks, the 1619 Project, all these people, and it's all about like how horrible the founding fathers were, and they were white supremacists and bigots and all that garbage, right? That's not the case. They were products of their time. Slavery was not an American thing, right? Like some of the worst slavers were Africans, enslaving fellow Africans. So it is important that we talk about it, but with the right context, the right um, tone for young kids, but empowering them with that information, not just to shame people in the past, but to talk about what that means for us today. That is the critical thing that we're after in this whole book. Here's the timeline of the whole settlements as they came, a little bit about each one, because some of them were very different, and we don't often talk about how they were different, and more importantly, why that even matters. Who cares? Well, it matters because, uh, in fact, I think this is the, uh, the section where we get into... Um, we have this whole section on continental cookies. Uh, let's see if I can find on the fly really quick where that is. I may have already passed it. But we got this whole section where as they talk about unifying, each of these colonies has, uh, there's the cookies at the bottom, they have uh, different ingredients. So we've got this whole recipe in here on continental cookies, and there's 13 ingredients. And so as they're going through, Fred is using as a lesson, how did these people from different colonies join? And they all have different traits and characteristics. And so you can see we've got different colony names on all these ingredients. And in the story, we, we use these as a model to talk about the different colonies and their different traits. And so suddenly it becomes interesting and kind of uh, tangible because you guys are going to have this recipe. They're really good cookies, by the way. And, uh, and so you can talk about that with your kids and talk about those unique backgrounds of the colonies and how Pennsylvania is kind of like baking soda and why, well, the story talks about it, right? And then we got George Washington and Virginia and baking powder, talk about the Quakers, like all these things, but all centered around a fun little uh, activity that you guys can do. So, and I'll talk about the curriculum in a minute that, um, that relates to that as well. So bake the cookies, you guys will love them. We got the whole recipe and everything in here. But that is the idea that we're sharing uh, illustrations, we're sharing content, and certainly the story that makes history interesting, because for most kids it isn't, for young Connor it wasn't. So interesting, number one, but relevant, number two, to their lives today. Why should a kid in 2022 care about what happened 250 years ago, right? I look through these other social studies books uh, that, um, that, that are being used in schools, and they don't really address that. They, they, they just don't. They, don't. they just say, here's all this stuff to learn. But why? Who cares? Why should a kid learn about all that stuff? Why is that important? 
And, uh, and so our book really heavily focuses on that. Why the things that happened 250 years ago matters to our lives today. So then we end on the Declaration of Independence. And then these illustrations are just phenomenal. Elijah is amazing. Kind of the, the old kingly rule contrasted with the Declaration of Independence. You recognize that from the back of the book here. And so that is inside the book. Woo! That was a lot of fun. So what do you guys think? You're already chatting in the comments. I see the comments flying. And uh, so excited to share this with you. So I'm gonna, um, we're going to call out some comments, answer a few more of your questions, and then I got something fun to share. So we homeschool. This is Gail, a seven-year-old daughter. Can't wait to receive the beautiful book. Excited for both of us. Exactly. It's the parents as well to learn and talk about the history of our past. The recipes are a bonus. Awesome. Thanks, Gail. We're excited to, to send you the book. Let's see if we got any questions that we can answer as well along the way. Thank you, Raina. Um, so excited to be able to share this stuff with you guys. I'm scrolling over here, seeing even more comments. Maximus uh, loves the books. Do you have a shipping discount threshold amount? Um, so no, we don't currently have that. Um, and uh, we actually just set up a new shipping distributor. As I said, we're moving warehouses. Uh, so we don't currently have that in place. It's something we're actively looking into, though, trying to reduce that cost for you guys. But not today. Uh, you're just going to pay the shipping to get it to you and just our cost. We're actually uh, paying a little bit of the shipping, so we're not even charging you guys full shipping just because all the costs have, uh, keep going up. So we've absorbed some of that so that you guys don't all pay for it. All right, Stacy's asking, if using in homeschool, how many times a week or chapters per week, et cetera, would make a year study? Okay, that's a good question. So as I said, there's 11 chapters. Um, so you could break that out to do one a month, although that's kind of stretching it. I don't feel like there's enough uh, in our book and curriculum to expand by that much. I would say it's more like a chapter a week. So if anything, this is kind of a semester-long type of thing, you know, three, four months uh, that you could do, like a chapter a week with the activities and spend uh, a day or two getting through the story, maybe three days if you want to stretch it. Uh, so think of this more probably as a semester uh, type of thing rather than a full thing, a uh, full year thing. Susan is asking, can you get these in schools? I love that question. Susan, I'm thinking of hiring someone on our staff full time uh, to, uh, to just go uh, evangelize the book into schools, private schools, charter schools, homeschool co-ops, uh, provide teachers and principals with our curriculum, with uh, the books as well. So we're going to have someone on staff, I hope. If you're interested in being that person, if you're the right person with hustle and sales skills, if you're a former teacher, maybe you know how this curriculum stuff works for how schools adopt it, feel free to reach out to us. We're easy to find online. But I'm going to be looking for someone later this year because definitely we want to get this into schools and get kids all over the country learning history the right way. Uh, Carrie is wondering, related question, will there be discounts for schools? We do have bundle deals. Feel free to reach out to info at TuttleTwins.com if you want to do a bulk purchase. We can send you that info, uh, whether you're a school or just want to arrange a, a big bulk purchase for you know, friends and whatever. Um, that just takes us a little bit longer, but we do have some bulk discounts available. Um, Lola, how do I get everything you're showing? So let's put up on screen our sale image. Great question, Lola. Tuttle Twins dot com slash history. Again, this launches tomorrow officially. And so if you're watching this live stream, you're going to want to order tonight. Get your order in before everyone tomorrow so that you are not buried in the deluge of orders that we'll be getting so you don't have to wait as long. But you're going to be getting this whole book for 75 bucks along with the 200 pages of curriculum, the six hour audio book, the four hours of extra videos, we price these all out separately. They're going to be sold all separately. It's going to be about $215 if you want to buy it all once we're just selling them at their normal prices after this launch deal. You want to get all that. You want to save over $100. TuttleTwins.com slash history. Make sure you get that order in. I've got all kinds of orders flying in here. We got uh, Heather from Hobbs, New Mexico. Amanda from Fallon, uh, Nevada, Allison from Maple Plain, Minnesota, Brittany from Tafka. Uh, they're like scrolling too fast. I can't even read them. So you guys are awesome uh, picking this up. Jason says, our eight-year-old Jade is curious if the Tuttle Twins have cousins. Yes, they do. In the, in the Road to Serfdom book, they're celebrating with uh, Uncle Ben and Ben's kids. Uh, so they at least have those cousins. There may be more unnamed uh, yet. 
but they at least have a few cousins that we've revealed so far. Um, and actually, we're working on some stuff that may have other family revelations soon. So great question, Jade. Thanks for asking. Wendy wonders, is this book written at the same reading level as the Tuttle Twins? That is a good question. Uh, so our children's books, we usually tell people ages 5 to 11. That's what we've been saying for years. Again, that's just a general thing. We got three and four-year-olds who will like sit and be read to, even though they don't like totally understand everything. We got 16-year-olds who will pick up a Tuttle Twins book, and it's clearly beneath their age in terms of the format, but the ideas are new and interesting and fresh. So uh, we typically say 5 to 10. We're saying 7 to 13 for this book, primarily because it's longer, it's meatier, there is you know, more history in it. And so we felt like five and six year olds from our test reading are gonna struggle a little bit more. You know, if they're being read to, if mom is reading to the kids or whatever, they'll do fine. But uh, in terms of independent reading and study and whatever, seven to 13 is probably more of a sweet spot. Thanks for the question. Celestia, where can we get your t-shirts that you show in your email newsletter? Oh man, I should have anticipated that and provided the link. Our poor customer service team has been fielding a lot of questions. Uh, they're both on Amazon. So if you got the email yesterday uh, where I had the shirt that said, don't make me repeat myself, history, and it's history talking, you can find that in just in Amazon type, don't make me repeat myself shirt, you'll find it. Uh, and then this morning I shared the shirt where it says uh, treason is the reason for the season. That one is actually not Amazon, I misspoke. That is run by a company called Liberty Junkies. I think it's just libertyjunkies.com and they've got a men's and a women's and you can go find that there. So uh, those are some of my favorite shirts that I bring out every uh, Independence Day. I don't say 4th of July, I try not to say it because no one calls Christmas the 25th of December. Why do we call Independence Day the 4th of July? So. I bring those shirts out every independence and uh, have some fun with them. Christina, where is the book printed? This one is printed in our uh, newly Orwellian uh, friends to the north in Canada. Uh, hopefully they can uh, get out from under the rule of their uh, dictator up there. But this one's in Canada uh, and in the United States. Um, the paper uh, industry is horrible right now and uh, we've really struggled to uh, find enough paper to print enough books. So we printed some in Canada, some in the United States, and uh, that's how we're getting the books out. Thanks for the question, Christina. As we pull up the next question, uh, I wanna mention really quick that uh, I'm gonna have my fun little announcement to share in just a few minutes. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. Uh, this has been a long time coming. We've sold thousands and thousands, like I don't even look, I think we're, I, don't remember the number, but our poor warehouse had like pallets and pallets of packaged books getting ready to go for everyone. So again, if you want to get the books ready to go, make sure you are um, getting your order in. Uh, ideally tonight, or if you're watching this live stream later, ASAP, the sooner you do, the better it's going to be. Uh, Jashana asks, how long does the sale last? Great question. Um, the sale is going to last at least through the first week of July. So it's kind of the big Independence Day sale. Uh, so, you know, get it in ASAP, uh, 75 bucks, again, the whole thing, tuttletwins.com slash history, and uh, you're going to be able to get that whole bundle. I have no guarantees, but at least the first week of July, we may do a few days beyond that, but then everything will go back to being separately priced, and then if you want to get the curriculum and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have to just do your own thing. Okay, so thank you for the questions. You're welcome to reach out to us anytime at info at tuttletwins.com. I want to talk about the fun little, little announcement that I teased, um, and then we can wrap things up. Um, I'm just scrolling here and looking at our latest sale. Man, you get, this is fun. I mean, the sales are coming in, so you guys are, I don't know if you're on your other computer or what to get, to get your orders in, but it's fun to kind of see everything scrolling. Uh, so thank you. And um, all right, so what's the announcement? Well, the announcement is uh, what I think Sarah asked earlier and stole my thunder. And for those of you who haven't seen yet, uh, I don't think anyone's got their copies yet. I think the first copies uh, arrived tomorrow. I think we had one or two commenters to that fact. But when you get your book, you're gonna see right here, it says volume one. Okay, so why? Because some people have certainly seen this and like, well, why would you stop in 1776? If you ask Ron Swanson, that's America's birthday and that's when things started. To which I say, well, the gestation period was, you know, the centuries leading up to it. So we've got to go back and tell the early story of what led to the Declaration of Independence. So that is volume one. The announcement is there's definitely going to be a volume two and we hope there's going to be a volume three and four. 
So tentatively, don't hold me accountable, this is just a tentative thing, but tentatively what we're thinking of doing is that volume two would cover from 1776 and go all the way through like 1789, so the whole, uh, the fighting part of the revolution, not the intellectual part of the revolution. We go through the whole war, through the peace treaty, uh, the constitution, ratification, and we'd go through all of that in volume two. So volumes one and two together would go all the way through, you know, birth of a new nation, we got this new constitution, and we're ready to go. And then volume three, excuse me, uh, volume three, again, tentatively, would go from birth of a new nation, here's this new American republic, all the way through the war between the states, the Civil War, and probably post-Reconstruction as well, slavery and all the rest. So um, we're going to cover all those early years you know, the fractionalization of, of the American Republic, George Washington, his, you know, initial, uh, his presidency, his cabinet, uh, his farewell address, talking about warning about political parties uh, and the division that that would create, talk about how all these founding fathers were fighting one another, talk about John Adams, the Alien and Sedition Acts. Here's like the very founding fathers who created the Bill of Rights, and they're violating it just years later. John Adams signed the Sedition Act into law that said you can't criticize the president, you can't criticize Congress, but you could criticize the vice president, who was Thomas Jefferson, a member of the other political party, and they would arrest newspaper owners. They arrested Benjamin Franklin's grandson, who was a owner of a newspaper, because he criticized the president, because he was doing all these things related to the French Revolution and, and French immigration. And so there's so much rich history in early America to see how ideals can fall and how hard it is to put into practice these ideas. And what does that mean for us today? And so uh, volume three, I think, is going to be really exciting and all the way up through the war between the states. And then volume four would be uh, post-Civil War through up into the Progressive Era, World War I, World War II, and then probably uh, ending something like with uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower's farewell address and a warning of the military-industrial complex. Uh, so that might be a fun ending. Who knows? We're just thinking right now, but uh, definitely there will be a volume two. We can at, la at least commit to that uh, because we're already kind of working on it. The goal would be that we would have it out by next uh, Independence Day, not 4th of July. And so that is the hope. We might even have it out before then. Uh, it kind of depends on, well, a lot of things. But there definitely will be a volume two. So this is something you can invest in, knowing that there will be at least another book to cover all the early American history through the creation of the Constitution. Volumes three and four are up for debate. Why? It all depends on how this book does. If there is strong sales for this book, uh, then definitely that is an incentive for us to keep producing more. So if you want more resources like what you've seen in walking through the book tonight, please do your part. Share this live stream when we're done. Wait for that video tomorrow for like the standalone video post. You can share that. You know, talk to the, the moms in your church group, your homeschool group. Like spread this as much as you can. We're going to throw on screen again real quick so you have it. The link that you can share. Um, right now it's active. People can buy it right now. It's got all the info. It's even got a, a free chapter. So let's put that up on the screen so people see that again. It's TuttleTwins.com slash history. Again, the launch deal is active. It launches tomorrow. Good for at least a week, but if you want to get your order soon, you're going to want to place that order in ASAP tonight. We got the curriculum, 200 pages. You know, it, it's just, there's so much, you guys. We've been working on this for quite a while. So really grateful for all of you guys buying the books, making sure that we are able to get this to you ASAP. Uh, there's been a lot of people ordering and it's been very exciting. So again, as a reminder, TuttleTwins.com slash history. You have other questions, leave comments in social media. We'll engage there with you. You got specific questions, reach out to info at TuttleTwins.com. But please, if you want more of this kind of stuff, like, we need your help to spread this. If you know principles, if you know uh, a way to get this into schools, if you have connections, shoot us an email uh, at info at TuttleTwins.com. We want this fall to start uh, getting it into the schools. If you've got church groups or Facebook pages you run or however you want, like, spread this far and wide because that is how we're going to be able to get more eyeballs on this thing, get more books into more hands. That's how we're going to save the country is by teaching these ideas from the past. So for us, this is a real mission-driven thing. We're very passionate about that. Hopefully you can tell. I'm really animated and ready to go tomorrow. 
uh, but this has been a long time coming. So thank you. Get your orders in tonight and, or ASAP if you're watching this later. TuttleTwins.com slash history is where you want to go. As we exit, we're going to share with you the video. Hope you guys have an awesome night. Again, thank you for the support. You guys are going to want to get this book. It is amazing. I am highly biased, of course, but we've shared this with a number of families and the reviews have been, not just families who like read our books already and already like us, we're trying to see like, hey, new family, what do you think? And the reviews are just glowingly positive and people wanting volume two already. Uh, so uh, get the book, get the bundle, all the curriculum and everything together. We're gonna roll that video and cap it off. Have a great night, have a great Independence Day. TuttleTwins.com slash history. Share it with your friends. Share this post, share the video tomorrow. Enjoy the video as we exit and have an awesome night. We've all heard this phrase a million times. Those who don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. But look around you. Our society is full of people who went to school, who were supposedly taught American history, yet who love socialism and attack the ideas that America was founded upon. Individual liberty, property rights, and free markets. It seems that the rising generation isn't learning from the past. And that's no surprise since nearly every social studies book only teaches kids about the past, names, dates, places, and other superficial factoids. Today's textbooks miserably fail when it comes to explaining the ideas, the values, and the philosophies that led America's founding fathers to do what they did. Put simply, children today aren't being taught to learn from the past, and we're all paying the price. For the past two years, we've been working on a solution, and it couldn't have come at a better time. With Marxist organizations and activists trying to rewrite the past and cast aside the principles embraced by our founding generation, the need has never been greater for educational material to help our children learn the truth. That's why I'm excited to share with you our solution to this problem, a Tuttle Twins textbook that teaches American history. Imagine if your children could learn about American history in a way that explains not just the events of the past, but also the ideas that led them to happen. It's those ideas that can be applied in our day. And if we understand how and why things happened in the past, then we can actually learn from them. It all starts with understanding our history. And there's no better way for your children to learn history than through fun storytelling and entertaining illustrations. Our team has sold over 4 million Tuttle Twins books. And in consultation with a variety of historians to guide our work, we've created a 240 page fully illustrated book to teach the inspiring stories of our country's past. It's a beautiful book, but more importantly, it teaches important ideas from our past so your kids can apply them to their lives today. And while our high quality hardback book is great as a standalone reader, we also have a companion curriculum workbook and a wonderfully produced audiobook to help your children learn even more about America's past. There are many problems in our country today, and parents like you want to be part of the solution but often don't know how. Teaching your kids the truth about our history is the first step. Buy your copy of America's History from the Tuttle Twins team today and start reading as a family. And together, let's learn from the past to create a better future.